In this video, I'm going to walk through how you can add code to every part of your site. Now, there are so many variations and so many ways to approach this, but I am going to show you where you could add code so you could get a better sense and understanding of how to work with code and customizing your Squarespace website and or just adding in simple features like uh, analytics or a chat feature to your website, where you do that, how you do that. I'm going to show you all of that now. Okay. So the first thing we need to break down is there are three separate parts to really consider when we're talking about code. There are a little bit more, but let's just really focus in on three. There's code that is site wide. So that's number one. There's code that's site wide. There's code that is to design the look and feel of your website. So basically visuals, CSS. And then number three, there is on page code. So specific code for one individual page. All right, so let's take a look at that. First thing we want to look at is site wide code. So site wide code is in settings and then we go to advanced and then we go to code injection. Now here is where you add code. So I have this random code here. I am just going to remove this so you can see it easily. We have header, footer, lock page and order confirmation page. In most cases, if any company third party tool is requesting to add code, 90% of it is going to be either in the header or the footer. What you need to consider here, if if you are adding, say, Google Analytics code, you're going to add it up here. If you're adding a chat feature to your entire site, you're going to add it up here. If you are adding plugins, they may say put it in the header as much as possible. Obviously, follow the instructions that you're given. Don't complicate it. But as much as possible, you don't want to put too much code in the header if you don't have to, because that will slow down your website. It will slow down how your site loads. So if you don't need to put it in the header, put it in the footer. And one last note here to consider, if it says something like play Place this code before the end, the final body tag, well, you would place it in the footer. So let me show you what that looks like here. I'm just going to add a line of code that is not actually useful. Okay, so I've just added this code. I'm going to hit save. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my URL. Okay, so I am in an incognito window. I am going to view page source. And then here at the very, very bottom, at the end of all this code, you're going to see a line of code. See right here. We just wrote this, right? So heading font sample XYZ font size 100. This comes before the end body tag. So if the code, if the plugin, the third party tool, whatever it may be, says, please add this code before the end body tag. Well, if you add it to the footer, you are good to go. All right. So for now, I'm going to remove that, click save, and we are good to go. All right, so now we have covered number one, which is code on the entire site. Let's go to number two, which is custom CSS. Let's say you want to design the look and feel of this section here or any section on your website. Well, you have this custom CSS section that we could talk about now. So I'm going to go back to the home screen and then I'm going to click design and then custom CSS. Now, right before I click on this, what I want to iterate is if you're new to this, you want to double check, triple check, do a few Google searches, see if the feature you're looking for or the styling you're looking for is native in Squarespace, which basically means that you could already do it within the Squarespace platform. If you can't, then you want to use custom CSS. But for example, I could change the size of this font across the entire website in site styles. So I don't necessarily need to do it in custom CSS. So that's just one thing, one note overall, but let's get into this section now. So let's click on custom CSS. Once you're in here, you're going to see all these different sections and things. I have a few plugins that I was playing with. If you're getting a plugin from say like ghost plugins or some plugin store or whatever that might be, well, they most likely will tell you to put some type of code inside custom CSS, especially if you're doing visual changes. That's what CSS is. It's all about the visuals. When we talk about CSS, mainly about the visuals, I'll put it that way. So when we're here, you could see there's already all this code added. There's a lot of ways to figure this out. This is not an in-depth guide on how to code or what to write here, any of that, but let's just play around for a moment. So this actually, 
actually is affecting this text here. So you'll see as I change this, if I go 170, you'll see it's making this text bigger. So basically what's happening is anything that's tagged H1 is going to become bigger on the website. So I don't know if there's anything else H1 on this page. There is not. So only this is changing right now. But basically anything on the site that's tagged H1 is going to become font size 170 pixels. So here's where you could play with that visual element of the entire website. There's ways where you can target specific elements. So this is an extension on my keyboard. I just hit command E. So it just pulled up all these little like unique identifiers that help you tag a certain thing. So if I just want to make adjustments to this text here or this section here, I can do that. So there are two plugins that do this as of right now, I believe um, I'm going to look at these plugins here. So let's see. All right. So there are two types of plugins here. There's this Squarespace collection slash block identifier. It's free on Google Chrome that you could just download so you could get this. And then there's also the Squarespace ID finder. The ID finder is a little bit better for 7.1. As you can see here, it provides a little bit more information. So per this specific section here, if you want to just focus in on this section or this section or this section, you can make adjustments to it via the code. But overall, those two plugins are great. They're both free. You can use to make adjustments to the custom CSS. If you want more content like this around the custom CSS and making adjustments, there's probably a million adjustments or videos we can make around editing a website. But if you want any more content, leave them in the comments below. Any of your questions, anything I could possibly help with. With. One note, if you are new to this, Squarespace does not do a good job of keeping revisions at all. They don't do it basically. So if you're in here adjusting the code and making edits to your site live and working really hard to build a beautiful website, what I recommend is open up a Notion page or a Word document or an email uh, and save it as a draft, but basically just copy all this code Whatever tool you can use, if you have an official code tool you could use, put it in there, but just make sure you copy it every once in a while, paste it in there so you don't lose anything, especially your hard work if you're writing new code or you're learning this for the first time. So now let's talk about part three. Let's say you want to add code to an individual page. Now there's a couple reasons you may want to do this. Number one being you may only want this customization for one individual page or maybe two or three individual pages, not all of them, or you don't want to put all this extra code on your entire site. So in part one, we looked at how to add code to the header of your site. Well, if you're adding a feature to only one page, you shouldn't add it to the header of the entire site. Reason being is it's going to slow down your site just so that one page could have a feature. As much as you can, you want to avoid that. And so that's where this individual code injection per page comes in hand. So the first thing we're going to do is click on pages. And then once we're in here, we have all these different pages, right? So I'm just going to go to this page here. This is just a sample page. I'm going to click on the settings wheel. And as soon as I click on that, it has a few options. Now all pages have this. If I go to advanced, you're going to see here page header code injection. So this is code for this individual page. Now, if you're running Google ads, for example, they're going to ask you to put some code in the confirmation page or the conversion page. And this is where you would add that code into the header here of this unique page. So you could come in here, drop a few lines of code. Once you're done, hit save and you'll close out. It'll add that code to that specific page page. But let's say I just clicked into this page here. Let's say you want to add code to a specific section of your site. Maybe you're embedding something or maybe you want to add a unique feature that requires code onto your page. Well, what you can do is click edit. And then once you're in the page, anywhere on the page, anywhere on your site, you have options, two blocks that are really helpful. The first block is going to be, let's click this plus sign. And I'm just going to type in the word code here. So we could just focus on the blocks that matter. Don't worry about markdown unless specified, but in most cases it's not going to be. Just think about embed and code. These in some cases work interchangeably, but if it says embed, go for the embed. Now let me click on this and just show you how this works a little bit. All right. So it says add this like URL here. Well, if you click on this little icon, you could add the embed code here. So if you're embedding a Vimeo video and it has special customizations and they give you this long pile of code, well, you could throw it in here and it'll work great for you. Now, 
Now, let's say you want to customize a section. So let me click this plus sign again and then hit type in code and then go here. Well, now you have this code block. So you can do a whole world of magic here. All right, so there's a bit of code here that I just added. And you may say, well, why did you add this as code? I could come in here and edit it. Well, let's try it. I'm going to center it and then I'm going to do this. I want to make something that's a little bit smaller right underneath it. I'm going to center it and then I'm going to set it as heading two and type in extra text. Well, look, can't you see the difference? There's this bit of a gap here that I may not want. I may want it to be a little bit closer. And so for this one unique section, if I want to make this edit or adjustment, well, you have a code block that you can add it in. Obviously, you need to know the code <laughs> to write it and you can copy this if you need it. But basically, with a few lines of code, I was able to con customize this and control it a bit further. And if I wanted to take it one step further, what I could also do is do this. So here in this case, I just added a little bit of code here to make this one blue. So this is like our brand blue, for example. Well, I just added it in here to change this one word to be blue. So it's the only way you could do it right now within Squarespace to customize it. And now I have this full control to be able to adjust the text to be a little bit closer, adjust it how I want it with code on the page. And it's only affecting this one section here. So it's not affecting anything else on the site. Uh, it's just this one section. And if I really want this to be a header for all sections, this style, well, I could just copy it and then take it to other pages where I have heading two or heading five or whatever that might be. So that's how you could adjust code for a section on your website. So I'm going to save that. That's good to go. So those are the places that you can add code to your website. We started with the header and footer. We went to the custom CSS. That's where you do a lot of the visual heavy lifting. And then we went into the specific unique page code options where you could add it to the header of a page or you could add an embed or a code block directly on a page like we did here. So I hope that helps you. If you have any other questions about this, drop them in the comments below and we create new videos constantly about this. So feel free to drop them in the comments below and we could produce content for you. Hey guys, thank you for watching today's video. If you got value from this video, hit that like button. When you hit the like button, it lets the YouTube algorithm know some important information, but it lets me know that you got value from this content. If you have any questions, drop them down below in the comments. And with that, if you got value from this video and if you're looking for more content just like this, I publish a new video every single week, if not multiple videos every week, hit that subscribe button. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.